Good evening, I'm Pia Antiveros. This is News.ph, but it's not politics as usual. This is the tragedy of our times, that every time the rains come, so does the realization that we keep putting off what we should have done decades, if not ages ago. What makes it even more tragic is that we can actually just replay interviews with architects, engineers, scientists, hydrologists, because they say, I've already said this before, which is what I'm sure my guests and I will say, a well-known architect, a respected urban planner, a man passionate about his country, about urbanism, and yes, even politics, governance, sociology, history, civic-mindedness. Architect Paolo Alcazarin. Thank you. I was about to say, sir. <laughs> Thank no, you, no, for no. being with us tonight. Good evening, Pia. Good evening. It, it feels like, uh, I feel like Bill Murray in that, that movie, Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Yeah. Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, Groundhog Day. You wake up and it's the same thing over and y yeah. it's you again in front of me and asking yeah, me Yes, questions. and it, it's you again in front of me and I wanted to say thank you for essentially agreeing to just do a repeat of, <laughs> of the interview a year ago. No problem, I can do it in my sleep. Oh my so goodness, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's how much of a broken record it is. Uh -huh. Okay, well let's begin with this. No, um, if we study, and this is what you said also last year and this is what you said yes. in your column a few days ago in the Philippine Star. No? If we study what happened 200 years ago, uh, nothing has changed, right? Well, what has changed is that the Metro Manila is, uh, is, has become five times larger than it was uh, half a century ago, mm -hmm. ten times larger than it was a century ago. That's, that's what's changed. So the mm -hmm. thing is the problem just keeps on getting bigger and bigger, but we uh, find no solutions. Mm -hmm. Or whatever solutions we have, uh, we just keep on trying to catch up on, uh, mm -hmm. on to, to uh, to address them. But why? What, why? what is it about us that, that makes us do this? Well, it's, to it's, ourselves. it's because, uh, because the, the realities of our, our, our cities, or our biggest city, which uh, metro, Metropolis, which is Metro Manila, has just uh, escaped, uh, escaped in terms of uh, how big uh, physically it is and how much of an increase in population it's had in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. So it's always catching up rather than planning for something in the future and making sure the infrastructure is there to address all of our needs. Mm -hmm. okay. That's as simple as it, uh, I can put it because that essentially is what uh, urban or city planning is, addressing mm -hmm. the needs of the future. Mm -hmm. Urban planning is a mess, no? Is that, is that a fair enough statement? Well, there is no urban planning, in, in, <laughs> essentially, in, in okay. Metro Manila because you, you cannot, you have no control over the factors that affect uh, physical planning in, in the metropolis. Mm -hmm. uh, the population size, the infrastructure, the transportation, mm -hmm. uh, the drainage and basic services just escape uh, being contained. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, since we are a metropolis with 16 or 17 different kingdoms, and nobody could, uh, talks to each other or coordinates, nothing can ever get done. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it, that was an interesting thing that you said a year ago, and I think you've said that in the past also, no? The several 17, <laughs> 17 different kingdoms, when in the past we used to have this Metro Manila Authority, Metro Manila Commission, this yes. martial law yes. era uh, structure that could have been useful. Yes, in, in fact, we are, we are the last remaining uh, metropolis of our size in, in, in Asia that is not governed as a uh, unified body or as a single, uh, single uh, governance. Mm -hmm. um, so you have Metro Tokyo, you have Metro uh, Jakarta even uh, is a, a big, big uh, uh, metropolis. Singapore is essentially one big city. Mm -hmm. uh, Kuala, Kuala Lumpur is the same. So we are uh, governing uh, Metro Manila as it was uh, 200 years ago. The political mm -hmm. boundaries of all of our towns and cities, are well, now the 16 cities in one town in Metro Manila, are boundaries set uh, two, three centuries ago when the real realities was uh, it was mostly open. Mm -hmm. And the only urbanized area was the center, which is Manila. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now this time around, we still haven't realized that. Um, it's like we're afraid to have another Metro Manila Commission, another Metro Manila Authority? Yes, we threw, uh, we threw out yeah. the baby with the bath, bath water mm -hmm. uh, after the people power revolution and uh, everything that was before that. Associated not everything was, was uh, mm -hmm. evil or mm -hmm. not uh, everything was, was bad. And so uh, mm -hmm. governance with uh, Metro governance was act is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do a uh, 
massive rebuild or or more correctly a, a massive planning or replanning or whatever it is i mean yes can we still way. save ourselves i mean y yes we we could and we tried before uh, over the last century i've counted 12 different master plans mm -hmm. from the 1905 uh, daniel burnham plan uh, all the way to the the three before the war and the uh, uh, six during the uh, post-war and in the 50s and the few uh, in the 70s uh, mm -hmm. under the Metro Manila Authority at the time. Mm -hmm. So at each point, we tried to address uh, the, the needs of the, the city with a uh, framework mm -hmm. that could have saved us. Yeah. But at each point, uh, uh, fate conspired to, to make sure that nothing, of, nothing was built or nothing was uh, uh, pushed through. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the American period, it was the change in uh, government policy, and uh, towards Commonwealth, and of course, there's the war. After mm -hmm. the war, we had problems, uh, and, and going into the martial law era, there were problems of that era. Mm -hmm. So at each point, uh, the population and the increase, because it's a free market, um, the city or uh, the cities increased in size uh, and extent. So now we're we're uh, 12 million or mm -hmm. 15 million, if you really count the outlying areas in a city size that's 10 times uh, larger than what it was at the start. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can't, I mean, you know, with, like you said, no, and having master plan, I mean, there were, like just last year, 2012, master pl plan, World Bank funded. And then there was that 1970s master plan by June Palafox. And well, the, so, uh, the, uh, is it as simple as, okay, let's get this master plan and implement it now? No, you, you, can, no. Uh, you, you can't. Even though the plans of the past, uh, we, we should not romanticize even mm -hmm. the Burnham plan because they cannot ever be brought back. Mm -hmm. the, the conditions of, uh, within which they, they, these plans were made are all changed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, we have to find a way to jump, over, jump uh, in front of the problems and mm -hmm. uh, create a plan that addresses uh, the current problems plus the, the needs of the future. And this is where you need to have certain things. Um, like? Conditionalities, uh, conditionalities, which uh, is first and foremost is the governance structure. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of our problems are physical, but the problems of, uh, of implementing any, any solutions mm -hmm. um, need a metro governance. Mm -hmm. um, the, Floodwaters will not uh, respect the boundaries between Marikina and Pasig yeah. or San Juan. Yeah, right. They, they don't stop at They don't Marikina. stop at the boundaries. They, they go into Quezon City. Yes. <laughs> Water oh. flows or seeks the lowest level, mm -hmm. and that's why, why it floods. Well, mm -hmm. of course, there are other reasons why we flood. We didn't build that Paranaque Spillway, which was the second element, a necessary element in, the, in that... Uh, in the in early that, 70s The early plan. 70s. You, oh. you, you, the, the thought was to drain everything into or a lot of the w floodwaters into Laguna de Bay and from that point that's only a retention uh, area uh, to drain out into the sea mm -hmm. so they they built the Mangahan spillway but failed to build the Paranaque spillway and today mm -hmm. Paranaque is all, fu all fully urbanized it would take trillions and trillions of pesos to try and build it if you could ever do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are you telling us? That there is no solution? Well, there's a radical to, solution if you, yeah. if you want to look at that specific problem of mm -hmm. uh, finding an outlet for, for that 1970s corrective, which is mm -hmm. the Paranaque Spillway. The only uh, other possible uh, alignment of a, of a large waterway would be the Manila International Airport. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the map, it's about eight to nine kilometers uh, about the same uh, with as Paranaque, but you can't build in Paranaque anymore. If the airport gets moved, as a lot of people believe it will be moved, mm -hmm. then you can build a spillway using the right of way of uh, the, airport, the airport, which is owned by the government. Uh -huh. Okay. And there's only yep. a very small seg section through Tagig, but that's a much smaller problem than Tagig always floods. <laughs> well, that's it. Oh. Well, oh. it floods because there is no outlet for the yeah. water that, that goes into it. But you have to really think of uh, out-of-the-box solutions. Yeah. Uh, we, we cannot get fixed into to, uh, solutions of the past. It must mm -hmm. be a totally yeah. new paradigm. When you say you, who's the you there? Well, us. Us? Yes. But then, the knee-jerk reaction of the government? Oh, let's, be, let's, uh, let's set up this uh, task force, let's set up this commission, let's uh, put up an interagency committee, mga ganun. And then they get bogged down in uh, all these uh, 
uh, bureaucracy, red well, it's, tape, it's rules, layers. Et it's really layers of uh, bureaucracy, and the first layer is, of course, the uh, LGUs, the 16 mm -hmm. cities and one town. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and then you have the uh, Metro Manila Development Authority, which today is essentially responsible only for mm -hmm. traffic and garbage. And then you have the national, uh, the layers of uh, national uh, agencies, DPWH, uh, the land transportation, uh, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. So you have three layers of governance to sift through to try and get everything, anything done. Mm -hmm. And since Metro Manila, going back to the original problem, is 16 cities and one town, mm -hmm. then, uh, and everyone has been, um, uh, decentralized, it's very hard to find a central solution, which mm -hmm. is what you need for all of the big problems mm -hmm. like flooding, uh, crime, pollution. Mm -hmm. Today in Malacanang, uh, Secretary Babe Singson of the DPWH said, and I quote, um, we had wanted to do this, meaning move yes. the informal settlers out of the waterways. We had wanted to do this, pero tatapatin ko na kayo, maraming, maraming nakiusap. Wag naman sana bago mag-eleksyon. E ngayon, ang ibuelta na namin sa kanil sa amin, ang ibuelta na naman sa amin, magkakaroon naman ng barangay election. Hindi na kami papayag. Tapos medyo may yes. kwati siyang kambyo. Yes. No? He said, and again I quote, Siguro you're overreacting to that anecdote dahil na-follow up siya ng Malacanang reporters na pinigil. Hindi naman pinigil. Tuloy-tuloy naman as I said. And then somebody asked, Sino ba nilapitan? Hindi ako. Sino? Anecdotes lang yun. And then he said, eh, ang dami namang LGU involved dyan, eh. take your guess. What do you make of something like that? Well, this is where the problems of uh, flooding uh, overlap with the, with the political problems and the problems of uh, urban housing. Mm -hmm. In a situation where uh, government and society cannot provide for the basic need of shelter, then uh, people uh, find their own solutions, and that solution is informal settlements. Mm -hmm. um, that is a huge problem, and it's, it's uh, embedded in our political problem of uh, uh, fractured governance. So uh, it conspires, the whole situation conspires for each LGU uh, government to try mm -hmm. and retain their informal settler population because these are in many ways assured votes or mm -hmm. these are the, their captive, uh, captive votes. Mm -hmm. Now, again, a radical uh, solution, and I have to state uh, this possibility, is that if you have a metro governance and find some way in the constitution to still ensure the right to vote, but the, the right to vote only for a metro governance, mm -hmm. but not of the in individual LGUs anymore, then mm -hmm. you can, uh, people can still vote, formal or informal, for their leaders of government within a larger structure. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, required, you must build affordable low-cost housing and house mm -hmm. the three or four million people in, in, within the metropolitan boundaries. And that's a huge problem, almost All as right. difficult as to solve yeah. as a flooding problem. Okay, last year, and this is before we go to a break, last year um, when I interviewed you, that was August 2012, um, by that time, because you had posted on your Facebook page, you know all these very cute, uh, funny <laughs> uh, illustrations, no, about yes. uh, possible solutions to all our, you know, the, the entire myriad of problems. Yes. And I was wondering if this time around, na, here we go again. Eto na naman tayo Groundhog Day. Yes. Um, have you come up with new illustrations and <laughs> new to, solutions? Well, to tell you the yeah. truth, like it's not funny anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that it's, it's any help to, to uh, make light of the situation. Mm -hmm. I, I've always felt that we've crossed, crossed the tipping point, we passed the tipping point, and if we don't do anything immediately, as in yesterday, yeah. then uh, problems will when did we When did we cross that tipping point? It's obvious. Uh, if last you're looking year, from the out, yes. Several years Between ago. Between last year and, and this year, it, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's, we're, we're like the frog in the slowly boiling kettle of water. Mm -hmm. Our yeah. problems are so bad, we don't know that we're already cooked. Mm -hmm. And so that's the danger of uh, living in the metro because we get so used to, to dealing with the problems. We're so adaptive as, uh, uh, as, a, as a people that yeah. we just take it and take it. But now, as you can see in the last few days, the, the city grinds the halt, the metro, yeah. me metropolis grinds wala the halt. Habagat wala pa. <laughs> okay. And of course, there's the earthquake. Right. We have. Okay. We'll have to take a short break. News.ph will be right back. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're still watching News.ph on the Solar News Channel. I'm Pio Antiveros. My guest tonight, architect Paolo Algazan, and he's uh, at Pinoy Urbanist <laughs> on Twitter. But you're more on Facebook. Yes. And that's where you were posting all those uh, illustrations last year. But like you were saying yes. before the, the break, it's not funny anymore. It's really not funny. And uh, mm. having to sludge through traffic yesterday and today, mm. it, it's not funny anymore. And it's, I got tired of... Uh, putting up all these this, uh, caricatures and, mm -hmm. and drawings. Although some of them are really practical uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. being, being a designer, uh, the, my, f my default is to draw something up as a solution. Yeah. But uh, now I'm, I've taken the tack of uh, being a bit more serious. And if I may draw, yes, draw the, 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 the reason why yeah. we flood, this is Metro oh. Manila. And the problem is a lot of our, our citizens are not map literate anymore. This is Laguna de Bay. This is, uh, Manila, Manila Bay. Manila is here. A uh, hundred years ago, Ma Manila was only this area. Mm -hmm. And then every, every decade, we would go further and further up, out until with about a thousand, a thousand square kilometers of highly urbanized area, all of which we fill with concrete, the roads, mm -hmm. the parking lots, the yeah. buildings. There, and there, all yeah, there's something about us, no? Yes. We like to fill up it's a horror back we grand. fear of empty spaces and also fear because it's a uh, urbanization without any control mm -hmm. and the 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 effect of for paving everything over is that the water that falls and the water falls much stronger now because of climate change mm -hmm. there's nowhere for the water to go mm -hmm. and it goes straight to a drainage system that essentially is about 50 years old mm -hmm. and this is metro manila this is the west valley fault line and all of the water that falls here in the Sierra Madres, which is completely, almost completely uh, deforested, they have nowhere to go but down. They because this is upland, reason. this is lowland, and this is where the Mangan spillway works. Mm -hmm. It brings it all to the, the Laguna de Bahi, which then overflows, mm -hmm. and there's nowhere for it to, to drain because the Paranaque spillway was never built. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will have to wait for months as they do now or last year for the water to be slowly absorbed by, by the bottom of the lake and for the rest of the area mm -hmm. around Metro Manila to absorb the water because we've covered it all up with, mm -hmm. with concrete. Mm -hmm. So okay. the solution is really, to, the, the only solution it seems uh, mm -hmm. is to find an outlet. Mm -hmm. the, you, you can uh, mitigate some of it by, by dredging the, the lake and increasing the capacity. And also, as the DPWH is uh, planning to do, putting retention basins mm -hmm. to capture the water before it flows. Mm -hmm. But really, the problem is not just one. It must be a, a cocktail of, of uh, solutions, one that really has to start up here, which is mm -hmm. beyond even the governance of an integrated Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. It's regional. Yeah. So try and get Bulacan and all the provinces up there to coordinate with a Metro Manila governance. And mm -hmm. you have the, the fourth and fifth additional layer of governance you have to get through to try and solve the problem of this. Mm -hmm. So it's really complicated. And every year it gets more complicated because urbanization is spreading here, is spreading here this is being reclaimed okay. so and then this two areas because of uh, extraction of groundwater mm -hmm. is suffering suffering subsidence this area is a foot lower than it used to be mm -hmm. this area is three feet or a meter plus lower that means mm -hmm. the floods will stay longer if you have a surge the floods will reach up to about 20 kilometers inland mm -hmm. and so everywhere you look it's the gates of hell <laughs> Ay, nako. Okay. So God, um, it, it, it they, makes they, it they need a map like that in, 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 yeah. in government. So who's going to do all that? Like, well, yeah, okay, you said us. Okay. us we we all mean, have to do it. We all have to yeah. realize that if we don't get together, if we, we don't uh, coordinate or have a single entity, uh, a, a governance structure mm -hmm. that makes, makes it happen, and every, everyone toes the line. Uh, every, we will, we will uh, see each other every year, the two of us. <laughs> Next year na naman. Okay. In August 2012, in that interview last year, you said, and I quote, My prediction is next month, this will all be forgotten. That's sad. But here we are three years from the last incident, meaning on DOI. We're repeating essentially the same things. 
Last year also, at roughly the same yes. time I interviewed you, I had interviewed Glenn Tabios, a yes. hydrologist. And uh, all we had to do was replay hmm. this, the report I did on that interview, and it was exactly you, you could have just replayed our interview. <laughs> no, 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 wag, wag. No, because it, it, it makes sense for you now to yeah. say na, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, it's not funny we've, anymore. We've crossed that tipping point, yes. right? Yes. Na dun, lumampas na tayo sa, sa threshold. Yes, I, I can't make light of it. It's like yeah. Vice Gundam making, oh, anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Wait, anyway, you also said, and I quote, you don't listen to us unless a disaster happens and we get interviewed. Yes. You meaning like politicians? Uh, uh, what? Us meaning people in the physical design uh, mm. professions, the architects, yeah. architects landscape the architects, the engineers, the, engineers, the, yeah. the, the planners, mm -hmm. um, or, or the uh, scientists in, uh, in uh, the natural sciences, which and they all tell us that uh, this is what we're doing wrong. It's, we're mm -hmm. abusing, abusing nature, and nature is getting back at us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we must realize that our, our existence is in a physical uh, uh, reality, mm -hmm. which is changing. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean to say just climate change, it's yeah. um, uh, man-made changes because of urbanization. Mm -hmm. So we really also have to look at how we build cities, the physical uh, manifestations of our increasing population and our I increasing economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, find new paradigms for development and it's something that cannot be uh, brought to us from overseas. Mm -hmm. In fact, the scientists and the planners and everyone else from, uh, from uh, the West are coming to Asia and especially to the places like the Philippines because our problems are so big and so complex. They have no solutions to our problems. It, it must be us. Mm -hmm. So what's lacking, again, uh, if you're looking at it, it, from the point of academia, is research and development mm -hmm. into new ways to build Philippine cities, especially the largest a complex of cities, which is Metro Manila. Yeah. And you also said that last year. Yes, <laughs> exactly I did. the same thing. Although okay. uh, Academe has reacted and yeah. they are uh, doing, uh, the, doing yeah. that, except that, of course, as you know, uh, like my alma mater, UP, gets little support. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay, so the subtext here, correct me if I'm wrong, urban planning is too delicate to be left in the hands of politicians. But they're the ones, they're the ones that shape our cities. Yeah. Well, okay, let me rephrase. Today, to, to be left just in their hands. Yes. In there, like you said, no, we, we need to engage. We need, we need to, to engage, engage and we need to, to, for everyone to get involved uh, in other cities and other countries. If you mention terms of planning like densities or floor area ratios or plot ratios or infrastructure, most ordinary citizens in those cities understand what they are. They, the, mm -hmm. the media also helps to educate them. Uh, you will find in Philippine newspapers and in uh, other media that there's a lack of, uh, of illustrations and drawings to show physically what uh, the changes bring about, mm -hmm. uh, what, how the, uh, the physical uh, problems affect us, but, but not so in, say, Malaysia or Singapore where I lived for, for 12 years. You would have regular diagrams and patterns to explain to everyone what mm -hmm. exactly the government was going to was going to do or was doing mm -hmm. and what exactly the changes like the haze that uh, besets uh, Singapore and Malaysia every few years they they show uh, they show illustrations to to make it very clear to people that these are the repercussions of abusing nature mm -hmm. your column uh, in the Philippine Star uh, entitled 10 Reasons Why It Floods in Manila yes. a few days going on. So I, I read through it and I was thinking, oh my God, he said this or he's been saying this. Yes. Everybody's been saying this for so long. And yes. It's just a, not just me. It's a lot yeah. of people who, who, who study cities, urbanists and mm -hmm. planners. Uh, and, and 10 is just the major reasons and uh, it's mo mm -hmm. much more complex than that. Mm -hmm. But these are the major reasons. It, it, the climate change, the mm -hmm. lack of uh, 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 modern drainage system, the siltation, mm -hmm. the informal settlers in, in the stairs but because they have no choice, uh, mm -hmm. the fractured governance, the lack of control in planning where you build mixed-use complexes where the infrastructure or drainage is meant only for subdivisions. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 we keep on piling one problem over another and hope that the problem gets pushed to the next LGU mm -hmm. or the next uh, uh, adjoining uh, area or the next river. Mm -hmm. We can't do that anymore because we're all interconnected. What flows from one city will, will flow to the, 
to the next, be it floods, crime, pollution. Mm -hmm. We're all connected and, and um, we cannot isolate ourselves. The rich cannot not en enclave themselves anymore from right. the problems. Well, it floods in, the in, <laughs> yes. in, the, in the subdivision. You, you can buy a penthouse in the 60th floor, but the air pollution will still reach you. Mm -hmm. You go down and the traffic is still there. Mm -hmm. You go down and the informal settler is just outside your perimeter wall. Mm -hmm. So there is no escape. We're all trapped here, yeah. not just the gates of hell, it is hell this for is most hell. of us. Okay, okay. What is it that will push us to finally really do something, even if we are beyond that tipping point? It's hard to say. Like I said, we're, 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 the, we're the frog slowly cooking, <laughs> and before we all know it, we're all cooked and ready for, for, to be served. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to say it, but it will be a, a really bad disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, the earthquake we had just a few hours ago was just a, uh, was five. Mm -hmm. And the projections of anything higher than eight, the scenarios have already been painted that the, the fatalities are uh, 200,000 plus. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a very uh, conservative estimate. And if you have the, uh, uh, the perfect storm or everything all together, it rains, mm -hmm. liquefaction, um, the, there are reports that a new fault has been found to crossing Manila. Mm -hmm. There is no escape for anyone. Of course, uh, some of my friends on Facebook say then it's time to move. Move where? Move the whole city, move, move the, whole the whole capital. City. And mm. uh, there are but, some but that's something also we've been talking about for years. But it's Dubai. difficult. We cannot do that. It's not practical. We, mm -hmm. we, we have to find new paradigms, but we also have to live with realities. Manila, mm -hmm. Metro Manila is the biggest generator of, uh, of uh, gross national product. Uh, although the, we only have uh, less than 10% of the population, we're, we're accountable for mm -hmm. uh, half, of the, yeah. uh, half of the wealth created. So you, you have to look at that and have to find uh, realistic ways to, to mitigate problems and to find solutions. And that is really uh, something that can be done if we just talk to each other, mm -hmm. if we just uh, yeah. manage our resources uh, so that we can address these problems yeah. and in a long-term uh, long uh, outlook. Okay, my one final question, brief question, brief answer, please. Um, if if um, tomorrow, halimbawa, Pwedeng ikaw na lang magdesisyon kung anong mangyayari, kung anong gagawin. What is the first thing that you would do tomorrow, tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning? Redraw the political boundaries of uh, Metro Manila instead mm -hmm. of s 16 cities and one town. And this has already been done, not by me, but with other planners before. There were uh, proposals as early as the 70s to cut, uh, to, to divide Metro Manila into more rational uh, divisions of about six or seven mm -hmm. and govern it as one entity and that's the only way we can find a solution. The physical problems, there are so many planners, engineers, architects, landscape architects yes. who can contribute to the solution but unless you change governance nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. And of course we have to talk about all those egos <laughs> that have to go out with it. Thank yes. you very much uh, architect Paolo Alcazar and thank you so much. I hope much I don't see you next year. <laughs> I think we will. I think we will. And thank, thank you, you all uh, for watching. Uh, I hope we can really think about uh, and think very deeply about what Paolo Alcazar just told us because we know there'll be another one of those great floods, those great disasters, and the Bayanihan spirit just won't be enough. Our solutions are more band-aid than long-term, more stopgap than well thought out, more rescue and relief than real rehabilitation and forward planning. I'm Pia Ontiveros. This is News.ph. See you again next Wednesday. Good night.